All right, so today I'm gonna to talk about purposelessness, being lost, um, disoriented, confused as a form of a shadow in a way, and also how extraordinarily easy it is to actually reconnect with what you intended in this life. Or if you haven't had a spiritual awakening, if you're still questioning, you know, if there's something beyond this life, something beyond your individual self, um, you know, this will still apply to you because God, right, or the universe is your body, right? Your body is part of nature and your natural rhythms, your cycles, your desires, your what is real for you um, is a sort of perfection that we get entrained out of um, by being controlled as children, which is part of the game, right? And our reaction to being controlled is to control. So we pick up all of these um, uh, manipulative tendencies, right? And it's it's understandable. If you're a child that is told when to eat, when to pee, who to hang out with, right? Then you're, you know, systematically disconnected from everything that is real for you. And you know, for some people more than others, this idea or this theme of purposelessness or feeling truly lost or like you don't, you really don't belong here is a um, greater in their experience than it is for others. It really was that for myself, which is why I'm going to talk about it. Um, I know it well. And first I will say, you know, I am a mystic. I am a spiritual teacher. I do energy work. I you know, I work in multiple dimensions and there's not one person in my family that has ever heard of any of that. Um, there was no context for me to be able to understand that that's who I am, at least for now, who knows what will come next. But so I, what, what really brought me into alignment with what makes me more vital which which kind of lines up synchronicities in my life is that i started to listen to my body and if you think about it i mean i shared i had cancer t 12 years ago um and the thyroid is kind of the bridge it was in my thyroid between the head and the heart right so there was like my heart and who i am and like what's real for me and like my conditioning and there was such a split that it's almost like this connection was severed, at least not completely, but to a pretty severe degree. And I, I believe that cancer is a mirror of being disconnected from yourself. And so I'm very passionate about connecting people with themselves, um, particularly through the medium of the body and the emotions um, and being honest with yourself, right? Honesty leads to seeing, seeing leads to um, the cessation of avoidance, the cessation of avoidance gives you so much more life force, so much more life force brings more life into your experience, whether it's new people, more, uh, experiences, opportunities, money. Um, so I'm going to go into this a little bit. So first of all, be honest with yourself. Do you feel disconnected from life? Maybe even you've had a spiritual awakening. Maybe you have seen very deeply certain things about life. Maybe God is very real in your heart. Maybe you see that everything is one. But here's how purposelessness or I'm lost would, might look in a symptom, right? So because we have to be real with, with what is in order to raise the frequency of it, right? So if you are feeling disconnected from life, um, it may look like it may look like you you have a grip on a routine, right? It's a routine. Maybe it's your morning routine. Maybe it's your exercise routine. Maybe it's um, maybe it's that you routinely connect with a bunch of people during the day that you honestly don't really want to connect with. Purposelessness is kind of an iteration of the original wound of separation, right? That we're separate from our mother, but ultimately separate from God. Um, and so it can, it can show up as an individual iteration as I have no purpose. So if you hold on to routine, if you hold on to people in your life that you honestly feel, you know, no true connection with, 
or that you honestly feel maybe you're using them for something, for company, for a, a, a crutch, to calm you down, to feel like you have some sort of connection in your life, but you just don't feel it's a genuine connection, you could be gripping onto those things to avoid the feeling, right? Of like, whoa, I'm actually floating in the universe by myself. I'm actually here by myself and actually outside of that routine, outside of that predetermined use of my energy, outside of that way that I use my attention by connecting with things, with social media, whatever, I'm actually avoiding that I have a very intense fear inside that there is absolutely no reason for me to be here, right? And I don't agree with like that life is meaningless in a way that's true, but from what I've seen in myself, when I'm real with what is real for me, and when I um, when I transmute energy, like my expression is very specific, and it really attracts to itself amazing everything, amazing people, amazing experiences, amazing travels, amazing lessons, amazing uh, teachers, amazing modalities, amazing like friendships everything everything because when you're real when you're real with you 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 the mirror that's in your experience is what is real real friendship what's really in your heart right for me what's really in my heart uh isn't necessarily having a 10,000 square foot house on the intercoastal but what is real for me is traveling a lot and maybe having a home in Sedona and a home in in Spain in Ibiza on the water right it's like I like to and I, I like to be able to share that with people to fly people there so money is important to me I'm not going to lie about that um, and I'll, I'll explain some experiences I've had with money uh, maybe at the end of this talk but so how do you reconnect with purpose there are several indiv individuation tools out there uh, at this point I know human design is one um, but I like to make it really simple, like even that is still an external authority and it can be very helpful, very helpful. Okay, I'm not making it any less than like a wonderful tool, but it's very simple in the sense that if you listen to, for example, I actually have to pee right now, right? Maybe you're sitting in your office and what's real is that you have the impulse to pee. But your mind says, oh, but I need to stay in the chair in case I miss this call. So right there, you're canceling out reality right there. And it, it seems minor, but it isn't because that movement could be about emptying your bladder. It could be about having a conversation with someone in the, you don't know. <laughs> so I remember for me, like being a lawyer and being in an office where I was told what time I was allowed to have lunch that was like abysmal to me and I had to be real with myself I was like no matter how much I change my attitude no matter what I do like this is abysmal like I hate it <laughs> like I don't like being told when my body is allowed to do something so I chose to leave that situation and um it's, it's so interesting that, you know, a lot of times people don't make that move because they're afraid that there's not a net to catch them. But the very fact that you want to move, the very fact that you just feel like a lack of vitality and fulfillment somewhere, the very fact that you're called somewhere means there is a net for you. And for me, what that looked like was my then husband got called for years to, to, um, travel around the world and work abroad. And so I went with him and I couldn't, I didn't have a law degree in those countries, so I didn't practice. And what did I do? I meditated, I, uh, I learned things, I read A Course in Miracles, I, I, I devoted myself to the mystical path. And, and it all worked out, it all worked out. And then as I separated from him, right, because I kept, Within the relationship that I was in, there was a big um, mismatch on many, 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 many levels. But basically, he was very social. He loved to party, loved to party. Um, I'm sure he always will. And I had just recovered from cancer. And anyway, I'm, I don't like to party. I don't drink. 
Um, I thought that he would grow out of it because I watched my parents and other people grow out of it, but he never did. So what I had to start doing was putting my foot down, like saying, okay, sweetheart, you go ahead and do your thing. I'm going to do my thing because that's in my world. That's the only option I have. Cause if I try to make myself do what you want me to do, I'm going to feel sick. I'm going to be very tired. So I started putting my foot down, right? And ultimately that led to, right? We hear in the law of attraction, like when you are connected to your source, what happens is that like the universe separates you like oil and water. It's literally feels impossible to stay with something, whether it's a job, whether it's a person, it's just so incompatible once you've been real with yourself about who you are, that there's no choice to make. It's like choiceless awareness that I've talked about in other videos. It's choiceless. It's just obvious. It's just obvious. So connecting with your body, being real and honoring yourself, like it unlocks, right? At that point, when I started doing that, I started seeing archangels, right? I had had non-physical awakenings. I've had a lot of uh, mystical experiences, but I remember um, the day that I moved out of the apartment, Archangel Michael came in, the whole room turned blue, like this color blue, the whole room, like it wasn't subtle. It was like the whole room turned blue and I felt this force lift me out of the chair and I packed my bags in three minutes, right? And I left and I never went back. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> you know, Archangel Michael is like works with all humans and he's very strong. And so all this mystical of who I attracted into my life, the adventures that I went on um, were remarkable, like remarkable and so deeply fulfilling. The, the, the people who are my friends at this point, like so deeply nourishing relationships and connections. But so it could look like if you are stuck in a routine, right? If you feel purposelessness, anything that, that knocks you out of your routine, you will violently defend. So I remember um, uh, like before I started putting my foot down in the relationship, like when I first started meditating, actually it was after I had an awakening, um, I started meditating to help my body. And I remember if my husband tried to interrupt it, I would like, I would have this heat, like this like steam coming out of my ears. Like I really didn't want him to interrupt me. Like I needed that for myself. But what would arise within me was an anger because of a deep, a deep wound that like, if I don't align with my purpose, part of me, right? One of the fragments of my mind still felt purposeless like if I don't do this if I don't grasp onto this routine like it's not going to happen for me my heart's desires are not going to happen for me the alignments and the synchronicities are not going to happen for me so I held on to it really tightly and ultimately that was perfect because it it did what it had to do it it made us both realize how incredibly wrong we were for each other right he wanted to bicycle for 50 miles i wanted to like chant and meditate and you know have a very slow morning <laughs> so and and i'm not saying you know i love diversity i love diversity i love people who are different than me and i can love people that are, who are different than me i'm not one of those people who's like i need someone who thinks like me feels like me and you know sees like me actually that can be rather boring um but i do I do acknowledge that you definitely need people in your life that are not antagonistic to you, right? That don't put you down or try to shame you for being who you are. So another way that it can look like purpose, purposelessness can look like the symptom of needing to be play a role in someone's life, especially if you are a teacher, a life coach, um, a mystic, you know, if if in a relationship, if you're not the wisest one, if you're not the most mystical one, if you're not, if you're not playing a role as the helper, like let's say, mm, let's say all of your clients actually really get helped by you and they don't need you anymore. And they, they are empowered and there's no hierarchy in their mind. That means, like one of the symptoms of healing is that you don't, the people who you used to revere as these great mystics or teachers, they just feel like you, right? If there's no difference, there's no separation between you and them. 
Okay, so you have those clients that are having that experience and you feel threatened, like, oh, well, now I don't have a job. Well, now I don't have income. Well, now I don't have a purpose, right? I was holding on to this identity of the helper and the advice giver um, because I depend on that, right? That is my source. That is my source of income. That is my source of security, right? That's who I am, right? That's an identity. So... If you feel that something can be taken away from you, right? Whether it's the example where I, when, when my ex used to interrupt me meditating, I felt like he was taking away something from me. What I realized was that's never true. There's no lack in the universe. And actually maybe being with him in this moment could be just as life-giving as my meditation practice. But also there's a dimension of, but honoring my meditation practice is what was real for me. But the reaction that came up revealed a deeper wound of, well, wait, I'm like desperately grasping onto this because I feel that I won't actually receive my heart's desires if I let this go, right? This is the only avenue to what is what I truly desire. Um, so, and I'll say as well, like even if, like I mentioned in I think the last video, a non-dual awakening, like ha having no desire is one dimension of reality. Reality still moves as desire. And that's why I've given the example of so many different, you know, enlightened beings. They all look different. They all move differently. They all do different things. They build different things. Some of them are in institutions. Some of them build new technology. Some of them you know, Jesus was a rebel. He would go into the, the synagogues and knock shit over. And, you know, he was a rebel. You know, not everybody, not all the beings are, you know, meditating in the Himalayas or whatever with no desires. That That's one emanation of the Godhead, you know, that has realized itself. It's, it's showing up like that, but that's not everyone. Don't put images in your head about what anything is supposed to look like. I say that a lot. So... Do you feel like something can be taken away from you? It's really enlightening to look at your relationships and notice like, well, if you have an identity with someone, where you see that clearly is when someone changes, particularly if someone you know, a friend, a client, becomes more empowered. Like, if you were in self-realization in that moment, you would feel love for that. You would be overjoyed. But if part of you feels threatened about that, be real with yourself. What do I believe about myself? What do I believe? What am I deeply afraid of? That if I don't, if I don't keep this avenue and this uh, dynamic and this um, stream of income in place, that I'm gonna be like floating out there by myself or like a chicken with its head cut off. If you f if you truly feel like that, that's okay. So that's what we go into which leads me to disorientation and confusion. We grip onto routine and identity to avoid the feeling of, oh my God, like actually part of me actually does feel like a chicken with its head cut off. It actually does feel completely disoriented and you might experience that as very physiological, right? Like when, when your routine is taken away, maybe during the holidays, maybe you go to a cabin in Colorado for Christmas, you don't have, your usual accoutrement, right? You don't have everything that you usually use to do your routines and you're on somebody, you're in a new experience. If you feel nervous and disoriented, if your mind tries to say, like this is really relevant with exercise. If you're in a new environment and your mind's like, all right, I'm gonna, okay, I don't have the workout equipment. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna like walk 17,000 miles. I'm gonna walk like 30,000 steps. That'll that'll make up for it, right? So you're still gripping on to some kind of security to keep you from feeling disoriented, from to keep you from feeling fear, to keep you from feeling like part of you actually deeply mistrusts life, desperately mistrusts life. And that could look like I mistrust that if I don't rest my body, then I will become unlovable, my body will become ugly. Um, if I let go of something, I will never get what I want, right? Look at these things. 
you know, when people ask, why doesn't metaphysical stuff work for me? It's because you don't know how you feel. Because if you would go into it without resistance, if you were real and honest about it and you said, oh my God, I am, I do feel really disconnected from life or part of me does. Part of me feels completely disoriented and chaotic without a routine. Oh, the honesty, so delicious. Oh my God, part of me like desperately needs um, to talk to people all day like so that I so that I don't have to actually sit with all these ticking nervous feelings that are that are in my throat in my solar plexus right in my body okay we're getting somewhere we're getting somewhere you know so if you're with reality you automatically get synced up to your purpose and that could be from the littlest things of honoring when you want to eat, what you want to eat, you know, that your body wants to rest. Like, it's so amazing how when you honor just like the littlest thing, nothing is little, everything is equal. You are either in alignment with reality or you are trying to, you are engaged in a strategy to avoid reality. And if you're in alignment with reality, which is nuclear energy and nuclear love, what comes to you and how happy you are and how more empowered you feel, it dissolves like all these eyes that you were looking through, right? So if you let yourself go into, for example, if you're in the cabin during Christmas with your family, you don't have what usually distracts you, you don't have what usually, your routine stuff, whether it's exercise equipment, whether it's the food that you wanna eat, and you felt how, how, actual, how desperately nervous and terrified you actually are. Oh God, my throat feels like it's closing. Um, I feel like I'm sweating, <laughs> right? That's all it is. All you're doing is letting this childhood memory complete itself. You're just letting it complete itself. You're, dif you're allowing the energy to move and diffuse, which I've demonstrated several times. And then you're seeing through new eyes, but the energy that was moving your behavior, making you nervously move, moving you into nervous activity and avoidance, now that the energy is gone, you're like, hey guys, let's play Uno, let's play Bingo. Oh my God, let's put on some like Christina Aguilera Christmas album and make cookies. Like all of that, the dialogue that was happening from an avoidance, it was streaming from a, from a feeling that you were avoiding, it disappears. Now you're full of life. Now you have new eyes, new ears. Now you're in your heart. So... <laughs> I love how this works. So, yeah, you know that you, you know, you have a sense of purposelessness if you desperately cling on to, you know, a role that you play within a group of friends, a role that you play with your clients, a role that you play relative to people who part of you, per part of you might perceive that people are competing with you. Be real about that. Be very real about that. People like to pretend like that's not real for them. Look, if you feel like what somebody else is doing can take away from you, it's not a problem. Just be real about it, right? Okay, a lot of entrepreneurs, right? How many pe people have released so such similar products, but and then all of them are successful <laughs> because, I don't know, because of the audience that that person has and the energy that that person has and gosh, for all these reasons, like if you feel like somebody can take something away from you, you have assigned, you believe that something outside of you is your source. You believe that something has the power to affect you. You believe that somebody has the ability to take something away from you. That might be something that you want to be real with yourself about because that can be very draining. That can be very aggravating to the body, right? especially the solar plexus. The solar plexus is the adult personal mind and it's like, it's a power center. So if you believe that somebody else has the power to take away something that would happen for you automatically if you were to raise your vibration, which is be real, which is go into the energy somatically, which is let the energy diffuse. If you believe they have the ability to do that, you're avoiding something. You're avoiding that some part of you feels really desperately unworthy, really desperately unworthy, really desperately lost, really desperately purposeless. Because if somebody else does what I do, that means I have no identity, that means I have no role, that means that I will die. 
right? That means that I will die. I will have no resources. So look at all these things. Look at all these things. Again, this is coming from, I was very disconnected to, to myself and not completely because I've always been kind of of a mystical nature. I was in the ethers floating around, which on the light side gave me a certain like really light perspective. But on the shadow side, like it's like I wasn't connected to my body or my desires. So I went along with other people's desires. I just, I went along. I, I found myself often like in dangerous situations in high school, like people would invite me somewhere like with men that, that would take us to a club and I not one cell in my body wanted to go clubbing, but I would go and then I would find myself having to tick my heels off and escape <laughs> with a friend, which is a good story. But I mean, I personally, you know, I, I'm not an adrenaline junkie. Actually, if I'm real, I actually was an adrenaline junkie because I was so familiar with adrenaline as a child that I unconsciously sought out adrenaline in my life. So you will, you will attract your childhood if you don't get back in your body, period. Your body is on autopilot based on how it was calibrated from the family and in my family, although my parents are one, actually wonderful, in many ways, very logical people, very, very decent. My dad's very logical my, and my dad's very fair. My mom's very compassionate, but emotionally their reactions are, are intense, at least to me, maybe to other people they're not. But so, so my body, like me coming in as like very happy and mystical, but then because I'm on autopilot, I don't realize how parts of me are vibrating just like that in rage or in severe victim mentality. So until you come back in the body and bring those fragments back together, it's like that Kabbalistic term tikkun. Tikkun, it's like this idea that the universe shattered itself into all these pieces, which is all a form. And so the journey back to oneness is bringing the pieces back together, which is the journey of identifying with honesty, how parts of you are vibrating and understanding life and, and bringing love to that part of yourself, bringing love. Okay, let me understand what this is about. I'm, I'm actually desperately clinging on to all of these behaviors because I believe that I have no freaking purpose in life oh but is that true well no because everything is god and we're all emanations of the godhead and and it is speaking to us through the minutia through how we want to eat where we want to go right now so if you literally just started saying no when you mean no eating what you want to eat Right, I've been a vegetarian since I was 10 years old. My parents are like the biggest carnivores I've ever met in my life. And even though I know, like my mind says, well, if you eat more meat, like it'll ground your body, it'll help you ground all the energy that you channel. Every time I try to eat meat, I like, I feel like gagging. And so it's like, after trying a few times, I gave up and I'm like, you know what, fuck it. I'm just gonna figure this out another way. And and I kind of automatically just combined food differently so that I feel more of a sense of stability or protein or something in my body. I'm, I don't even consciously know what it is, but I watched myself, I watched my choices change and I feel so much better. Um, I feel so much more here, but, but, but a big part of that is because I decided to honor my core and it, in the smallest way, there's no, there's nothing small. There's no small choices. What is real for you will automatically take you away from things that are not meant for you and towards things, right? My parents were always like, where are you going to meet someone? Go out, go to, don't go to Soho house. And I'm like, mom, I'm never gonna meet someone I like at Soho house. Cause I don't want to, I have no desire to go to freaking Soho house. You know, that's just how it is. Why would I try to do something that I don't want to do in order to get something? It doesn't make any sense. I follow my heart and my heart leads me exactly to everything that's, that's a reflection of my heart. So I'll get more into this. Um, honor your body, honor what's real for you, and be honest about yourself. Look at it. Do you feel lost in life? Are you trying to avoid feeling disoriented and confused? Go into it, relax into it, um, and it will diffuse, and you will see. You will truly see through new eyes.